Well, you get the idea. So. Listen, some of our amazing engineers cobbled that together for me to show you the gyro, but I can't wait to see what you guys are going to do. I think it's going to be pretty amazing. So the gyro joins our four other sensors in every phone. We now have the gyro, the accelerometer, the compass, proximity sensor, and the ambient light sensor. These phones are getting more and more intelligent about the world around them, and it's very exciting. And I can't wait to see what you guys do with the gyro built into every iPhone 4. So that's number four. Number five. This is a great one. A whole new camera system built into iPhone 4. Now, everybody loves to talk about things that are very tangible when it comes to photography, like megapixels. But we tend to ask the question, how do we make better pictures? And they're, they're different things. Megapixels are nice, but what cell phone cameras are really about is uh, capturing photons. Because the cameras are so small, the sensors are so small, the lenses are so small, that it's all about capturing photons and low light photography. So, what we've done is we've gone from a 3 megapixel to a 5 megapixel sensor, but we're using something that has been shipping for a while in larger cameras, but is fairly new to smartphones, and that is what's called a backside illuminated sensor. It's a way of getting a lot more photons to the sensor by getting some of the wiring and stuff out of the way. In addition to that, when most people increase their megapixels, they make those pixels smaller. When you make pixels smaller, they capture less photons. What we've done is as we've gone from 3 to 5 megapixels, we've kept the pixels the same size, 1.75 microns. And so they don't capture less photons per pixel, and we have more pixels. We've got a 5x digital zoom built into the camera app. Of course, what we pioneered, tap to focus. And we've got an LED flash built in. And the pictures that we're taking off this are pretty remarkable. Of course, you can do portrait and landscape. You can see the digital zoom right there. And these are pictures that are taken right off the iPhone 4. They haven't been touched in any way. And it shows you, it shows you what kind of quality we're able to get. Again, these are completely unretouched. These were all taken by our employees, just called some of the better ones that I saw. <laughs> so this gives you, an, as an example, that low light photograph is hard to take with any camera, much less a, uh, a phone. So we're really happy with the, the, the uh, photos we're taking with the iPhone 4. We think we got a great camera built in. But that's not all. Because the camera also records HD video. And that's HD video at full 720p at 30 frames per second. So it's real HD video. Now, we pioneered tap to focus for still photos. We now have tap to focus video. And we have built in video editing for trimming your clips right on the phone and one-click sharing to share your photos. And the LED flash also will stay on to illuminate scenes for video recording. And so you can actually record HD video right on your phone, edit it right on your phone, and then with a few taps, email it, send it in an MMS, send it to MobileMe, send it to YouTube. It's pretty remarkable. But we're going even further than that. Because what we've done is we've written an application ourselves <laughs> called iMovie for iPhone. And rather than tell you about this, 
I, I, I want to show it to you. And to show it to you, it's my great pleasure to invite Randy Ubelos. He's one of our incredible engineers. Our chief, he's the chief architect for all our video apps. I'd like Randy to come up and show this to you himself. Randy? Thanks. Thanks, Steve. Thanks very much. You know, I've been working on video editing software for a long time on some pretty groundbreaking products. 15 years ago, it was Final Cut Pro. Three years ago, it was the new iMovie. This year, I had the opportunity to work on another one, iMovie for iPhone, and it's one of the most exciting things I've ever worked on. You can now record HD video, edit with beautiful theme transitions and titles, and share your finished pro uh, movies all on the device that you carry in your pocket every day. It's really amazing. Let me show it to you. Go ahead and bring this up, and you can see the icon there. I'll go ahead and tap on that. So once we bring up the application, you get a list of all the projects that you have. And I'm going to go ahead and just tap on this project. And now I get my editing environment. I can see the clips that I have edited into this project down here along the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and rotate the phone over so we can go to landscape. And you see I got the same view here. And let's go ahead and do a little bit of editing on this. I can record directly into the timeline if I want or I can choose from existing uh, clips and photos that are on the device. I'm going to go to my video bin here, and I'll just scroll down. Let's pick this clip and put this in. And I can pinch and change the scale of the timeline down here. And we'll go ahead and select this clip. And now I can just grab the pin and drag this to trim the beginning portion of the clip to set the length to be whatever I'd like. I can zoom that in a little bit if I like. Now let's go ahead and add a photo. So what I'm going to do is go back to my bin, go to my photos. Then I'll scroll down here a little bit. And we've got this weekend in SF event. I've got a nice picture here that's got the whole group. So I'll go ahead and choose that. Now, once I've got that in there, I can tap on it. And photos automatically get a Ken Burns effect on them. So I can go ahead and adjust that. I'll go back to the beginning. And I can pan around. I can zoom in. And you'll see that as we go from the beginning to the end, I'll get a nice Ken Burns effect on that. I can also use theme transitions. So I'm going to go ahead to this title, and I'm going to switch it from Across Dissolve to a theme transition. And when I do that, I get this nice theme transition that'll come across on here. We can go ahead and put a title on the first clip. I'll just double tap on it. I'll select title, and I'll choose an opening title. I'll just go ahead and tap, and I'll uh, give it a nice uh, title here. So I'll go ahead and just type in uh, our California vacation. And once I put that in there, one of the things you'll notice is that it's put San Francisco on there. The camera records geolocation information into the video that's been recorded, and we pick that up automatically, and it gets put into the theme, as you see there on the screen. Now I'm going to go ahead and add some music. So I'll go ahead and I'll bring up the audio bin. I could bring in uh, music from my iTunes library, or we also have some theme music that comes with the product. So I'll go ahead and choose this playful track. And let's go ahead and just play this back. Now we have five different themes uh, with iMovie, so I'll go ahead and tap the gear here, and I can switch to a different theme. So I'll switch to the travel theme and select that I'd like to use the theme music. And what you can see here is that for this theme, the uh, geolocation data has actually been put on a pin on a map, and that map slides around and the pin moves around based on the location that you have uh, on the map. And if I scroll over here a little bit, you'll see the transition has been replaced with this nice theme transition with some stamps and things. Um, so that happens automatically when you switch from one theme to another. So I can come back to the project list, and I can tap the export button, and I have three different sizes that I can choose to export all the way up to HD 720p. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you a version of this project that was exported out at 720p HD, and what you're going to see was produced entirely on the phone, recorded, edited, rendered, all completely on the phone. I'll go ahead and show you that.